Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another week of our family devotionals as we continue to explore just some of the different names that God has. Remembering that each name is important and tells us something special and detailed about who God is and how he relates to our world today. We're going to be looking at a passage in the Bible found in Luke chapter 15. Now, this is the story of the prodigal son. Through this story, we are going to see another name for God, which is Father. This is the name that some of us are familiar with. Some examples of that is when we're talking about the members of the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. We say it in the Lord's Prayer, which starts with, Our Father in Heaven. Jesus Jesus refers to God as Father a number of times in the Gospels, such as John chapter 5, 10, 14, Matthew 28, and other places. Before we move on, we need to answer this important question. Is God a good father or a bad father? So go ahead and answer this question and get right back with me. That's right, God is a good father. The best, in fact. And one of the ways that Jesus showed us what kind of father God is, is through the story found in Luke 15. This story is both happy and sad. But let's talk about dads for a second. Some of us have really good dads. Ones who protect us, care for us, and plays with us. These dads are awesome. Some of you may not have a dad in your life, but you have someone who has stepped into that role. Like a grandpa, uncle, cousin, or a good friend. That is still awesome. Although I know some of you may not have that person in your life on earth who is that father or father figure. Or you may have even been hurt by your fathers because they were not good dads. This is not awesome. But do you know what is awesome? God is the best father we could ever have, and we can rest in that. That's right, whether we've had a good earthly father or a very bad one, we can take comfort in the fact that God is a good, good father who is perfect in all of his ways. I have been blessed to have a great earthly dad. Like, he's the best. I'm even sporting the company hat right now. With as great as he is, that does not even come close with how great of a father the Lord in heaven is. So no matter what type of father we've had in the past, we know that God, as Father, is the best Father. And we get a glimpse of that in the story in Luke 15. And here's the story. So there was a father who had two sons. The the younger son was disobedient and did not like his father's rules. So he asked for his father, he asked his father for his share in the inheritance. Basically telling his father that he wished he was dead so that he could have his part in in the inheritance cash everything and have some money. This was not a good or nice choice at all. Now the son could do whatever he wanted, but you see the problem was what he wanted was not good at all. He spent all his money on vain, empty, and worthless things. Before he knew it, he had no money left. A famine hit the land. This son had nothing. No money, no food, no friends. This younger son ended up getting a job feeding pigs. And he was still so desperate that the food he was giving the pigs looked yummy. So this is the sad part of the story. But one day the son finally came to his senses. He realized that he had sinned against his father and hoped that his father would take him back at the very least as a servant. The younger son realized his sin and repented. So this young son started his journey back to his father. And when the father saw him, he did something. What do you think that something was? Do you think the father was angry? Or do you think the father showed compassion? Go ahead and answer that question with your families and come right back to the video. Does everyone have their answers? The answer is that the father showed compassion to the son, and we see that in verse 20. And he rose and came to his father, but while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt compassion, and ran and embraced and kissed him. Luke 15, 20. Did the father tell his son to go away? No, his father was full of kindness and forgiveness. He ran and hugged and kissed his son. Did the father punish the son? No. This is not to say that we should or will never receive discipline from our father whether earthly or heavenly, for it is needed at times. But what is being shown in this story is the compassion that the father had for his disobedient son. He told his servants to bring the best robe, 
great shoes and to have a huge party. This is the happy part of the story. But not everyone was happy. The older son, he was angry in fact. Say angry. Angry. He didn't want a party for his disobedient brother. He was angry that his father forgave the younger brother. Because the older brother did not realize that he too was a sinner. He was full of pride. He thought the party should have been thrown for him. So how does this story or parable that Jesus taught show us more about God? Just like the father in the story, God is generous. He shares his world and everything in it. Eric taught us last week that God is El Elyon, or Most High God, and that his ways are always good and right. And then the week before that, Aaron taught us yet another name for God, El Roy, or the God who sees. God is a loving father who wants to welcome disobedient children and celebrate with them when they turn away from their sinful ways and come to him. Jesus also told us this story so that we could know what we are like. We often act like one of the two sons, either disobedient like the younger son who ran away, or ungrateful like the older son who was mad the celebration wasn't for him. We think we are good, but in fact we are sinners who need a savior. Jesus told us this story. He told us so that his father could be our father too. Jesus came to die on the cross and rise again so that we could have the very best, most loving, forgiving Father, so that we could be children of God. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. John 1.12 You see, God is not everyone's father, but he has promised to be the father of all who welcome Jesus' payment for our sin. Those who believe and trust in his name, God wants God wants to be your loving father, but you must believe and trust in Jesus. You can have a warm friendship and call him Abba Father. You can be a child of God through faith in Jesus. For those as Christians, we can take comfort in knowing that God is our father, a compassionate father who welcomes his children. As we continue thinking about God as our father, go through and work through the action steps listed in the description, resting in the comfort that God is a good, good father. Thank you.